Hello, in this video we're going to be looking at how we create and manage our farm inputs. We're going to be looking at how we build up the farm on the software to maximise the opportunities of the reporting features. We're going to look at how we add new machines, sprays, fertilisers and people. As we've seen in previous videos, we are, have uh, great flexibility with the software to carry out a number of operations from a beeline management to variable rate application. But what underpins all of the software and all of the features is the ability to be able to build up your farm uh, on the software. And what we mean by that is being able to create all the inputs that relate to what you are doing on your farm. So under the Inputs tab next to the management tree, we have a number of um, opportunities here to create new machines, new people, new supplies um, to ensure that we are, have the most up-to-date working group when we want to go out and do a job in the field. So I've created some examples on here. We noticed that uh, we had our fertilizer spreader before, so we'll open up that and have a little look inside it. So we'll, we'll right mouse click on the fertilizer and look at our properties. Now under our machine properties, we have a number of tabs. The general tab is uh, just a description of the fertilizer spreader and what it is. Now, as a f if you've got a couple of fertilizer spreaders, you may want to um, identify it a little bit more clearly. So rather than just calling it a fertilizer spreader, you might want to call it the Coon fertilizer spreader or something like that. So it's easily distinguishable from uh, anything else on the farm. Uh, we can then create, so we add all our details about the make, the model, the year, serial number, and the, uh, the costing unit, the cost per, um, per hectare, and the, uh, the, sp the spread width. Then we look into the service of when it was last service, if that's appropriate, may not be on a fertilizer spreader. Then we can look at our options, a photograph and an invoice. Now, if we want to include it on our invoice so we can invoice clients for work, we can um, tick the include on invoice and then a description. So it's our Coon fertilizer spreader and uh, our invoice rate. So we click OK. And that now is our Coon fertilizer spreader safely put away in the shed with all the information up to date on it. Now, if you want to add a new machine, we will highlight machines and select add new machine. And so I will then just add in a roller, very simple. And uh, from there, I will include include that in a category of land preparation and as you can see there's application, baling, maintenance, harvesting, hauling, other, planting, seeding and then the last one at the bottom is tractors. A roller however is land preparation we're going to uh, call it, um, let's make it an Amazon uh, the uh, the make the model is a one two three four the year is 2015 and the costing rate is uh, 12 pound per hectare and it is six meters wide um, don't want to put anything about the service don't need anything about the options our invoice yet yeah, we want to invoice uh, for uh, for the work and we're going to put that in at 15 pounds per uh, per hectare so once our information is in there then it stays in there if we want to change it on an annual basis we can do whenever we're applying this particular job to uh, to our fields so they can be changed then they're stored after you've applied them we do that with the rest of our vehicles if we have a quick look at the tractor uh, we've got all the, the standard information in there. Then we start to uh, look at our service intervals. And uh, we're actually over, overdue on our service. And so uh, that's something that we may want to, uh, to bring in and then update that when we, uh, when we have the service done. Um, it's fuelable and the supply that we put in it is, is, uh, is fuel and the defeat default burn rate is, uh, is 18 litres per, uh, per hour and again we've put that on an invoice as well. Uh, same with our operator, um, we put the details of the operator, um, category, well they're the landlord, um, put all the contact details and if we need to, again if we're invoicing uh, the uh, the, the, the person out then we uh, we put in those details as well so as much or as little as you like in the employee information then we come into our supplies which is a little bit more uh, complicated and takes a little bit more time to uh, to create and gather I've already put a, a herbicide in there it follows the same procedure 
um, as before we will have on this occasion um, our supply properties of uh, general chemical fertilizer so depending on what we're putting in the uh, we're putting an oryx um, herbicide on and into the uh, the supply at the moment so we put the uh, the description if we have a part number we can put that in there as well we describe it as a herbicide and then we go through the units that it's purchased in liters and uh, it has a cost of um, 56 pounds per uh, per liter then the distributed uh, unit is liters and the default uh, maximum and minimum application rates from there then we start to go into the nitty gritty of the chemical use and um, we want to keep detailed chemical records so we have to fill all of this information in here or as much of it as we can what are the chemical names the map number the manufacturer formulation mode of operation that it's a spray the default carrier is uh, is water and if the carrier rate is 30 the mix rate is 30 liters per hectare and uh, when we come down for reason for treatments this is a, a press button box and um, we have only got cleavers in there if we want to put more in um, then we can do reason for treatment we build these up ourselves um, and we'll put in bindweed and then click OK and then if we want to add bindweed to the reason for treatment for this chemical then we add it across and go OK and once we've put them in, we don't have to do this for every single job and every single time that we go and do a spray. Once we've put the spray in there, then it is OK. We don't have to uh, keep uh, keep changing it. If we've got restrictions on the uh, the spray, then we would fill all of this in, tick the re-entry restrictions, and then complete the uh, the label and the PPE, etc. in that box. And then the pre-harvest interval for what particular crop so if it's spring barley we've got a pre-harvest interval of, uh, of spraying of um, 100 days so it doesn't really matter but if we if we had a pre-harvest interval of 10 days then we would put that in there as well so we keep our pre-harvest interval up and if we want to uh, to invoice it out again and for it to appear on our invoice then we can uh, we can add this in as well so as we can see we've got great flexibility with our herbicides fungicides um, sprays uh, sorry fertilizers growth regulators etc and we put we build up our farm as we would on uh, on, our, on our normal farm our properties and our supplies and our inputs are just a pure reflection of what we've got within our um, our farming uh, farming operation and then depending on what we're doing we will need to uh, to add it to our working group if we uh, once we've done this and this was for uh, an area tutorial of uh, variable rate application once I've done it I can clear them off and then if I want to add oryx and then all I do is just double click the the rates uh, or double click the um, items that I want to bring in to go and do my job and for a spray then I would obviously need to go and create a uh, an applicator a sprayer to uh, to go and do that job and so that's the way that we build up the working group it does take time to build up our inputs but once the information's in it's there and it is well worth doing it um, during some quiet times because it then makes the software so much more useful because we can then record anything that we want anything that we're doing on our farm through this process but without our farm inputs then we're a we're not able to do a great deal so this where this is where the real power of the software comes in if you have a, a built up a full stock of your inputs that mirrors exactly what you're doing on your farm